The movie begins on Tuesday, June 6, 1944, US, British, and Canadian forces simultaneously landed on five beachheads in Normandy, France. By September 1944, Operation Market Garden secured the bridges over the rivers in the Netherlands to liberate the Dutch from the heavy German defenses of the Siegfried Line. Months later, the last major German offensive on the Western Front failed during the Battle of the Bulge after General George S. Patton employed strategic maneuvers to support the besieged Allied defenders in Belgium's Ardennes Forest. Then in March 1945, the 5th Infantry Division crossed the Rhine at Oppenheim, south of Mainz, weakening Nazi tank divisions. Finally, after Adolf Hitler's suicide, the Reich forces surrendered in April 1945 as the Allies band together to quell what was left of the fatherland. It is now May 1945, as American troops patrol Germany's Hartz Mountains. Remnants of the German army continue to fight in what American soldiers dub the void. In the darkness of night, an American M18 Hellcat tank destroyer, known as the Avenging Angel, is responding to commands to seek, strike and destroy. Nazi officials warn the inmates at a German prison to suffer the consequences should they attempt to escape, similar to the three fugitives caught earlier in the day. An American conspirator is brought in front as an example of what will happen when they disobey. Almost immediately, the American tank fires a missile directly at the German outpost, destroying the main gate and wiping out the German soldiers. The following day, after the successful liberation of Allied prisoners, Captain F. Britton McConkie tasked Sergeants John Atwood and Max Whitaker to drive their M18 tanks to the town of Brownledge to assist Baker Company. With one gunner short, they suggest recruiting Private Nelson to help in the mission. The men are asked to return without any casualties before General Allen arrives in the camp later in the day. Meanwhile, African-American soldier Sergeant Jesse Owens gets insulted by Sergeant Kerry Sims for his ethnicity, denying him to get close to the Avenging Angel even though he is an experienced Hellcat commander. He confides with Private Perry, another African-American soldier, as they sum up, they will always be looked down upon by others as long as racism is still rampant. The pair load the truck with the prisoners of war, including British Special Forces Lieutenant Goss, to transport them elsewhere. Later, after finishing lunch, the team of Hellcats moves out under the command of Atwood and Whitaker, with the latter reprimanding loader Daniel Barlow for smoking near the ammunition. As the convoy's departure is delayed, a soldier curiously asks Goss how he ended up in a German prison in the first place. Days earlier, SS Commander Klaus Schoenbeck caught Goss and some of his men on a road to a farm in Fadlenburg, despite the American lieutenant's ruse of wearing a Nazi uniform. The Allied soldiers bend down and prepare to get killed in the head by the SS official, who playfully asks them to shoot themselves. A defiant young soldier takes the pistol but points it at Schoenbeck, prompting him to fire back and gun down others that tried to flee. As Goss tries to grab his pistol, Schoenbeck hits him on the head, knocking him out. Eventually, the M18 tank destroyers head out for 15 kilometers to Brownledge. At the same time, Owens and his truck are on the road when military police block their path, informing them the area they are going to has been flooded by a ruined hydro dam. He is redirected to another road that will take his convoy to St. Andresburg, which will lead directly to the void. After informing the men, he instructs a weary Goss to sit up front with him. Meanwhile, the Hellcats are still traveling as Ramrod Mitchell fools around with Daniel on the radio to keep their spirits up. Later, upon reaching the void, Private Perry sees a dead soldier blocking the road. Little does he know that Nazi soldiers are setting up a trap, as a hidden German Panzer III tank directly fires at his truck, killing everyone inside. Fortunately, Owens and his men abandon their vehicle and flee from the scene just as they get cornered. On another road, the Hellcats ask for directions as they seem lost on which way to go. They stop and rest near an Allied military checkpoint, consuming some of their rations and purchasing soda bottles. Unbeknownst to them, Owens and Goss are hiding somewhere deep in the forest from the Nazis. Visibly shaken from the ambush, the two soldiers head east to return to the Allied forces base. In no time, they find an outpost and agree to climb the tower. They see only a stockpile of barrels, so they climb upstairs. Meanwhile, Atwood's group stops the tanks to help a German family whose car broke down on the side of the road. Whitaker translates the conversation, saying that the husband, Frederick Kurdoff, is driving to an uncle's farmhouse eight kilometers away. Sims inspects the vehicle and confiscates a loaded gun. Judging from his appearance, the men deduce that he is a former German soldier who abandoned his unit to live an everyday life now that the Allies have taken over. Ramrod is tasked to fix the broken carburetor while Daniel offers some of their rations to the wife and children. After a short while, Frederick starts the car successfully and thanks the soldiers for their help. While Sims feels that they must report him to base camp, the sergeants disagree and let the family be on their way without any hesitation. Filled with compassion, Daniel goes to the passenger seat and hands out a candy bar to the daughter. 
In the outpost, Owens and Goss discover that the Nazi soldiers in charge of the area are outside looking for them. They head back downstairs, where Owens guards the window while Goss tries to find a way out atop the outpost. Using an empty crate, they stack it up quietly and use it as a step board to leave through a whole seconds after German soldiers enter the room. As they flee the area, they hear the sound of tanks treading on the road, which they instantly recognize as one of their from the Stalock. The men beg Atwood to stop and rescue them. After explaining their predicament, the Hellcats take action, load their weapons and go off on foot to hunt down the Nazi soldiers, with Goss taking the lead. Owen stays behind and immediately recognizes Sims, who had been mean to him earlier in the day. At the ambush site, Goss and Atwood spot the wreckage and some Nazi soldiers loading the Panzer tank led by Commander Schoenbeck. While checking the M18 tanks, Owens enthuses the group of soldiers with his experience training for two years with the 12th Division 827 Company on proper tank maneuvers. Sims is dubious that the US military had chosen colored individuals to operate their Hellcat tanks long before white Americans. He starts questioning Owens on the rumors that many of his men were untrained, cowardly, unfit individuals with low AGCT scores and often disobeyed their superiors to do other things, but the sergeant denies this. Atwood and Goss return, with the former instructing Sims to contact the command post to alert them on the threat of a Nazi panzer tank in motion. Unfortunately, the radio signal is weak and scrambled, which they deduce may be due to the mountainous region they are stuck in. Atwood disputes that their group would not need support in the first place since they are carrying two tank destroyers. Still, Whitaker is more concerned with the Panzer's retaliation, knowing one shot can blow them all up. With no better option, Whitaker agrees with Atwood's plan to serve as decoys. At the same time, another team disables the Nazi tank from behind. Ramrod suggests they take Owens with them since he is well equipped to handle the tank weapons being a former gun commander. Atwood reluctantly agrees and lets the sergeant ride up front. Inside the Hellcat, Ramrod apologizes on behalf of Sim's attitude towards him, saying he is just a stickler for rules. With all the ammunition readied, the two tank teams split up while leaving behind Lt. Goss, who will keep other Allied troops away from the area. Soon enough, as the German Panzer tank locks in on one of the M18 destroyers, Atwood's team fires two missiles, crippling it. Two other Panzer tanks appear on their right flank and target Whitaker's tank, leaving the sergeant badly bruised and limp. Luckily, Lt. Goss comes to his aid as they hide in a ditch. He hands him his rifle to protect himself while he heads out to warn his men. Things take a more dangerous turn as Nazi soldiers appear from the trees and fire at the soldiers. Unfortunately, Sergeant Atwood gets killed while trying to guide Ramrod in the direction of the road. The Nazis later regroup to fix their broken panzer. With the loss of their tank commander, they are left stuck in hiding until backup finds them. Daniel buries Atwood's dead body near the bushes before the men hastily go. After returning to the Nazi outpost, Sims tries the radio once more to call Arctic forward but is met with static. Afterward, Goss catches up with the men, informing them of Whitaker's condition and the casualties that resulted from the attack. He suggests that Owen should lead their command now since he outranks all of them, but Sims protests and takes the position himself, refusing to take orders from an African-American soldier. They must decide quickly so that Goss can kill Schoenbeck before his army of Nazi soldiers overwhelms the area. Sims wants Ramrod to dismantle the tank and spread the pieces, but Owens feels he is giving up too quickly and must let him and Ramrod hold the position to fend off the panzer tanks. The brave sergeant tells him to show heroism now that the Allied forces will be compromised once the Nazis take over the bridge area. This angers Sims even more, as he insinuates Owens is trying to redeem himself and his people, mistaking his father as a formerly enslaved person. On the contrary, Owens' father was a decorated soldier, awarded the Legion of Honor by the French for his participation in the First World War in 1917. American troops would not accept a colored soldier for having such an honor, so they hung him on a tree. Despite that, Owen still believes in fighting even if he knows his race has no right to claim anything. Suddenly, a panzer tank appears and fires at the men. With no more time left to strategize, Owens instructs Sims to shoot down the enemy tank once it reaches a corner while he looks for more atop the outpost. Meanwhile, Schoenbeck's number 601 tank is fully restored and moves out of the hiding spot towards the bridge. Inside one of the outpost's rooms, Owens tries to fiddle with some radio wire to create an antenna. He brings it down to Goss, allowing Daniel to hook it up to their communications system and get a clear signal to call for backup in the canyon. This gets the attention of Captain McConkie, who is now aware Nazis will occupy the alternate route the military police are redirecting other convoys. He instructs the radio operator to bar the general from leaving his post and arranging a rescue team. This will take time, so the soldiers at the outpost have no choice but to strategize how they will defend themselves from three enemy tanks. 
Owens knows one of the tanks will be in a fixed position to force them out. He reluctantly teams up with Sims to travel on foot and attack Schoenbeck's tank with the towed guns they saw hidden near the road. Somewhere on another road back to the Allied base, the general is already traveling, unaware of the Nazi ambush waiting near the 520. The Panzer Strike teams radio each other, having discovered the American soldier's location, and ready themselves for an intercept. Owens and Sims carry one of the towed guns and align it carefully to the direction where one of the Panzer tanks is situated. The enemy tank slowly moves away, prompting the soldiers to load up and fire the ammunition. They miss and attract the attention of the Nazi foot soldiers, which forces them to exchange gunfire and fall back to the mill. The Avenging Angel holds their position and launches two missiles directly at the enemy Panzer tank, disabling it entirely. On the other side, Goss finds another Nazi group and kills the commander and his men inside their tank. Schoenbeck later discovers them and follows the trail left by Goss. Meanwhile, the radio signals are jammed once more as McConkie tries to get in touch with the soldiers at the mill and the general. Near the 520, the Avenging Angel is hit with enemy fire, destroying some electrical conduits. Owens and Sims manage to take down some Nazi soldiers inside the outpost. While they take a breather, Owens confesses that he had disobeyed the command, assaulting his white commanding officer. He explains further that his men will be ill-prepared for the winter after a fierce battle at the Colmar Pocket in February. Hence, they lit up a farm to warm themselves while drinking. Corporal Davis arrives to reprimand the troop for their revelry and orders Owens to bring them close to the enemy line of sight on the other side of the river bank. Though he knows it is risky, he leads his men there but soon encounters Nazis shooting from out of view. He then tells Sims they were sent for a suicide mission, so when he was the only one left alive, he returned to the corporal drunk and assaulted him with an axe. Suddenly, they see the avenging angel from the window, fleeing from the pursuing Nazis. Owens suggests they shoot the enemy panzer tank from underneath. As Daniel and Ramrod successfully gun down enemy soldiers at the mill, Sims appears from the hatch of their tank, requesting any flammable cloth. Meanwhile, deep in the forest, Goss corners Schoenbeck and his men. However, the lieutenant gets shot in the stomach, sacrificing one of the Nazi soldiers. Surprisingly, a young Nazi soldier shoots Schoenbeck in the back, declaring his surrender to Goss by handing him a pistol. He then grieves for his fallen friend. With time running out, Sims and Daniel work together to create a fire, making it appear their tank has been heavily hit with enemy fire so that they can lure the panzer to the area. Owens hides underneath the outpost to climb out directly under the Nazi tank and shoot from underneath with a Panzerfaust. The plan takes action as the smoke from the Avenging Angel attracts the enemy tank. Inside the mill, Sims holds off more Nazi foot soldiers to buy Owens more time, but he jumps out of the window to escape a thrown grenade. The Panzer tank drives underneath Owens, allowing him to disable it for good. Unfortunately, the building starts to collapse, leaving the sergeant trapped and bruised. Meanwhile, Whitaker flags the general and the military police to inform them about the situation. They quickly reached the area and saved all the American troops. The general commends Owens for his act of bravery, with a recommendation coming from Sims. He asks him to lead his division from now on. Goss and Whitaker catch up in the rescue truck, where the former returns his pistol. Daniel and Ramrod reflect on their actions and the people they lost along the way to their victory. Sims later approaches Owens to befriend him, realizing he truly deserves to be recognized as a hero despite the color of his skin. The movie ends as they share a drink from the flask and converse about more war stories as the Allied forces take control of the area. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.